our scripture for today's lesson comes to us first from the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, the seventh verse. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And from Luke twelve thirty two, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And again from Matthew, the twelfth chapter, whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. Let us now prepare for a time of meditation and prayer. You may want to lay aside the things from your lap and just find a comfortable position and allow your body to relax. We're going to sing softly together, God's love is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. Once again, very softly. satisfying love, that perfect love of God, as it moves in and through you, blessing you in every way. Be aware of your breathing, an easy, rhythmic breath. Feel that love of God bathing you. lifting you. This is what Christmas is really all about. Love. The love of the Christ. That child, Jesus, that was born 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, bringing us the messages of life. Peace. The Prince of Peace was born in Bethlehem. He came to show us how to live, how to be. He said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Know the truth in your heart. Listen. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of love, the spirit of peace. Tidings of joy. This is what the angels brought us that first Christmas. The joy of life. Teaching us to understand how to live life. How to abide in the law of God. How to live the perfect life. The life of the Christ. That baby Jesus represents us, our birth in the manger, 
in that inner place, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said. He said, it is within you. Feel that Christ Spirit being born anew in you right now. Feel it growing, learning to express perfectly in life. Expressing perfect love, perfect peace, perfect understanding, perfect joy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, the Christ, his own Spirit he gave to us. Whosoever believeth in that Spirit and understand how it works will receive eternal life, will live a joyous, prosperous, happy life. The secret to abundance is understanding the truth, knowing that God's abundance is always available to us, always flowing through us. All we need to do is tap into it. Christmas is a celebration of abundance. A celebration of a new life, a new way of being, the Christ way. Follow the Christ. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. These things I do, ye shall do these things and even greater things, for I go to my Father. We have that same Christ Spirit that was born in Jesus Christ, and we're learning, we're growing in our expression of that Spirit, that perfect Spirit of love and life and joy and peace. Be therefore perfect, he said, as your Father in heaven is perfect. This is why we are here, to perfect ourselves. We do so by listening and following the Christ, the Spirit of God within us. Listen to that wee small voice that is always there to guide you, your guardian angel. You're always being looked over. You're always being watched out for. The angels will come to lift you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Give yourself to God. Give yourself to love. Give yourself to life. Be peaceful, be joyful, be loveful. <coughs> be perfect. Let's take a few moments now just to absorb this feeling of perfection, this feeling the blessing of the Christ as we sit quietly and just let that love of God bathe us, be still as we sit for a few moments in the silence.
we let that feeling, that awareness of the Christ that was born in Bethlehem, let this baby be the symbol in us that if we will only listen, listen to our hearts, we will hear that Christ. We will be lifted up. We will be carried forth into a new life, a new way of being. God is love. We are love. Be that love. Always. In the name and in the presence of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. For those of you who weren't here last Sunday, I would like to make a little plug for our Unity Lights Christmas album. Uh, I, I've been listening to Christmas music a long time, and uh, I don't think I've ever heard a better album. It's wonderful. It's exceptional. And Jim's on the album, uh, Ron and Roger and all Jack Wall, a whole bunch of them. Um, Kenny Talley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so be sure to pick up. Pick up your album before you leave today. They're available in the bookstore. If you take an empty cup and put it under a flowing water spigot, what happens? It fills up, right? Yeah. To overflowing very quickly. And what happens if you turn the cup upside down under that same water spigot? No water will be held in the cup, plus all that you had there, it's gone. You'll have an empty cup. And that's what Jesus was referring to in the scripture today when he said, Whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that which he has. In modern English, he was saying, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. What does the cup under the spigot represent? Consciousness. Your consciousness which determines whether you're rich or poor, whether you're healthy or unhealthy, whether you're happy or unhappy. Your consciousness can be shaped to receive abundance or it can be shaped to reject abundance. The abundance is always there. It's the receptacle that may be upside down. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, has this to say in his wonderful book, Prosperity. He said, God is the source of a mighty stream of substance, and you are a tributary of that stream, a channel of expression. Blessing the substance increases its flow. If your money supply seems low or your purse seems empty, take it in your hands and bless it. See it filled with the living substance ready to become manifest. And as you prepare your meals, bless the food with the thought of spiritual substance. When you dress, bless your clothes. And realize that you're being constantly clothed with God's substance. The more conscious you become of the presence of the living substance, the more it will manifest itself for you and the richer you will be. Identify yourself with substance and you will soon begin to rejoice in the ever-present bounty of God. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just accept it. It's always there. Whether you have whatever you have, no matter how seemingly inadequate it is, what do you do with it? Bless it. Even if you have no money, no food, then bless your hands, bless your feet, bless your mind, bless your skills, your friends, the air you breathe, the sun, the moon that give you light. 
It's a wonderful life, no matter what you have or don't have. Don't ever lose sight of that. It's a wonderful life. How many of you have ever seen the movie? <laughs> At least once every year for, for the last 20 years. <laughs> Remember Jimmy Stewart plays George Bailey, the owner of a local savings and loan. And the final part of the movie has George's uncle losing a deposit, $8,000 that is enough to bankrupt the business and it threatens to send George to jail. In utter despair, he goes home. He yells at his wife, kicks the dog, tears up the furniture, <laughs> breaks things. <laughs> Finally, he goes out in the cold to find a bar and get drunk, trying to escape life. And in his drunken stupor, he even prays to God. And he goes out and rams his car into a tree and walks out onto a bridge over a raging river, and he's ready to throw himself into the river. And you remember what happened? God answered his prayer. His guardian angel shows up. <laughs> Clarence. <laughs> A.S.C. Angel, second class. <laughs> having been given George as his assignment to earn his wings to become the first angel. He had to do good with George, and of course in the movie George proves to be a pretty tough case. And finally he says, I wish I had never been born. And what did Clarence do? He granted that wish. George goes back to his town, to Bedford Springs, but it wasn't Bedford Springs anymore. It was Pottersville. <laughs> Heaven forbid. It was named after his arch rival, Old Man Potter, who, without George to oppose him, had free reign over the community. George's wife never married. His children never happened. His friends didn't know who he was. His brother, who was a war hero, saved hundreds of lives during the war, died at age nine because George wasn't there to pull him out of an icy pond when he fell in and he drowned. So he couldn't save all those lives. His mother had no idea who he was. He began to realize how important he really was. How important he was in the lives of so many people. He began to see how wonderful life really is. Even with all the trials and the tribulations. And he began to see how insignificant money really is. And he prays again to God to let him live. And Again, Clarence grants him the wish. And he realizes his lip is bleeding again and he can feel and he's back in life. And he rushes home, running down the street. And what was he doing as he was running down the street? He was blessing everybody. He was blessing everybody on the street. He was so happy to be alive. He was blessing the buildings, blessing the town. He even went up to old man Potter's window and blessed him. <laughs> and he comes home to find the bank examiner there, along with the sheriff, with a warrant for his arrest. And then it happened. The miracle of abundance. His wife Mary had made an appeal to the townspeople to save his business. And what happened? They all came through. They all brought their life savings, everything they could dig up. They brought it and they put it on the dining room table right in front of George and piled it up. Over $8,000. His best friend wired from Europe that he had a $25,000 line of credit anytime he needed to use it. Even the bank examiner 
pitched in a couple dollars. <laughs> the sheriff tore up the warrant. It was really a touching scene. Everybody cries. But Clarence got his wings. <laughs> How do we know that? The bell rang. Every time you hear a bell ring, an angel gets his or her wings. So remember that when you hear all the Christmas bells, silver bells of Christmas. Everyone who has ever been is an angel now, waiting to help you with your life. Angels are bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Prosperity is available. It's everywhere, waiting for us to embrace it. The angels are here now to help you turn your cup over, to receive the abundance, to get in the flow of it, to be full, to overflowing. Christmas is a time to demonstrate abundance. What goes on at Christmas time? Giving. And receiving. Isn't it fun? Give and receive. That's the way life is supposed to be. All the time. Giving is receiving. <coughs> Excuse me. Giving is receiving. And the more you give, what? Yeah, the more you receive. Giving is the same activity as receiving. It's all part of the universal flow. And so when you give, you're opening yourself up to receive. And that flow just comes moving through you. Giving turns your cup over and opens your heart to receive your abundance. Not of things, not of money, that comes, of course, but your cup runneth over with love. That's what God is. That's what life is. It's love. Old man Potter in the movie had plenty of money, but he was miserable. Nobody loved him. He was an old Scrooge. Had to be wheeled around in a wheelchair. His crotchety. He was, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> the acting was. <laughs> you know, it was, he was the one that took the $8,000. He didn't actually steal it, but the uncle, um, just kind of gave it to him in a newspaper, and uh, he kept it. <laughs> so he took, and what happens when you take? It's taken away from you. That which you have will be taken. Those that have, really have, know how to give. Not after they have, but before. You have to give first. Give, and you shall receive. A lot of people say, well, I'll give more when I have more. I can't afford to give now. Well, that's just the opposite of the truth. You give now, and then you will have more. That's the law. You ever wanted to give someone a gift for Christmas and then decided you couldn't afford it? What did you just do? You just turned your cup upside down. I'm not saying to go spend money that you don't have. That's not part of the law. Well, actually it is part of the law. <laughs> That's why so many people are poor now. They use plastic money. They overextend the credit card. That's the road to poverty. Many there be that enter thereat. The mighty stream of substance that Charles Fillmore was talking about doesn't include credit cards. It's cash. It's substance. It's hard cash, gold. And all the cash money in the universe is available to you right now, but in order to receive it, what must you do? Give it. And the activity of giving is really asking. The scripture said, ask and you shall receive. That's the activity of asking is really the activity of receiving. That's what George had to do. Somewhere within his being, he knew there was a God 
and that God answers prayer. And so in his despair, he decided to pray. Did a miracle happen? Actually, miracles are impossible. <laughs> There's no such thing as a miracle. Whatever happens is always a part of the universal law. It just looks like a miracle. What looks like a miracle is just a higher expression of the natural law. Jesus didn't work miracles. He understood how the law works. And he worked with the law. He understood it better than anyone we've ever known. He could walk on the water. He could feed the 5,000. In that miracle, he worked what looked like a miracle of abundance when he took those five little loaves of bread and two little fish and fed 5,000 people. But was it a miracle? It tells us right in the scriptures the process that he went through to work this so-called miracle. It was an orderly process. He called forth the order. If you'll remember the process, he had everybody sit down in rows, in orderly rows. And then he took the bread and he blessed it, blessed the loaves and the fishes. And then he broke the bread. And that breaking is an important part of this abundance creation. To break the bread is to get the attention completely away from the limitation that this is all there was, this two little fish and five little loaves. He wanted to take his attention away from the limitation and put it into the substance that stood behind what that represented, the abundance, behind the symbol. Though the five loaves and the two fish were barely enough to feed a small growing boy his lunch, you know, they wouldn't go very far in feeding 5,000 hungry people when they were intact. Because when they were intact, there they were, just five loaves and two fish. But when he broke it, he broke the image of it being limited, and he began to just keep breaking. And it just kept breaking and breaking and breaking. He broke it down into small pieces in mind. The substance was broken into the smallest atomic components. And he just saw this is what was happening, and it just kept coming and coming. When broken in mind, the meager supply has no longer the limitation. It's no longer the five loaves and the two fish. It's all sufficient substance. It's unlimited. What is bread anyway? It's wheat. And the wheat has grown from a tiny seed through the natural process of growth. Can you understand the process of nature whereby the tiny seed can draw upon the universe for all its needs to fulfill itself in growth? Can you understand how that works? Sure, you learned that in science class. And Jesus said, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? What is lack anyway? It's an absence of faith, an absence of faith in the law of abundance. Even when someone has an empty pocketbook, the trees are still drawing substance out of the air and out of the ground. The grass is still green. The birds are clothed and fed. You're God's child. Certainly he's care of you. Are you not special? More so even than the birds and the grass. God will take care of you. If what? If you let him. <laughs> See, we're more special than the birds or the trees. We're created in the image and after the likeness of God. And so we have the ability to choose. We have free choice. He was so kind to us to give us that ability. We can choose Prosperity or what? 
We can choose poverty. And we choose poverty by not paying attention to the natural laws, by not learning the miracle of abundance. And where do we learn that? From Jesus Christ, from the ultimate in creativity. Jesus was able to produce that abundance wherever he needed it, whenever he needed it. Jesus is teaching us the lesson that when you have a need, the answer is where? It's always right there where you are. He didn't have to go down to the store and buy food for those people. It was already there. It was in that little bit of a lunch from that little boy. The answer is always right where you are. <coughs> the seeming miracle is not in the way it manifests, but in the ever availability of ideas, of guidance, of all things <coughs> working together for good. You may be guided <coughs> by your guardian angel, by God, <coughs> by the frogs in your throat. <laughs> You may be guided to go fishing or go play golf or get another job <clears throat> or start a home business or break the loaves and the fishes. Listen to your guidance. And what did Jesus do after he broke the bread? He lifted up his eyes. He looked up to heaven. Heaven, of course, is not up there in the sky, in the air. It's up where? Yeah, it's up in consciousness. It's a higher level of consciousness. <clears throat> so that's what it meant when he said he looked up. He looked away from the appearance up to a higher level of awareness. There was only five loaves, and two fish in appearance. But he turned to principle. He looked up. Lack is merely an illusion, and no matter how real it may seem, lack is not a condition. It's an attitude of mind. You've created the lack with your mind, just as you can create abundance with your mind. An empty pocketbook is just an empty pocketbook waiting to be filled. But the fear of an empty pocketbook, the worry about it, spells the thought of lack. Fear blocks abundance. Fear blocks substance. And so in order to overcome the fear, you must look up to heaven. Put your house in order first. Get everything in order, line it all up. <coughs> then lift up your eyes. Well, first break the bread, break down the appearance, then lift up your eyes, look away from the world, and look to principle, look to God, look at the truth of the situation. Stop seeing empty pocketbooks, stop seeing empty bank accounts, unpaid bills, unemployment, lack of opportunity. Look away from the appearances and know that you're living in an opulent sea of substance. There's unlimited supply for you right now, right where you are, if you will accept it, if you have the consciousness for it, if you have your cup right side up. The miracle of abundance is not a miracle, it's a principle. And the seeming miracle just looks like a miracle, like the giant electromagnet the crane that can lift tons and tons of metal. That looks like a miracle, but if you understand electricity, if you understand magnetic power, then you know that's just principle. And the supernatural becomes what? The natural. The miracle becomes commonplace. The miracle is the availability of substance, that stream, that stream of substance that Charles Fillmore talked about that's ever pouring abundance into our lives. If you've ever read any of the, the prosperity books like Catherine Ponder's books 
in that Eric Butterworth book, you realize that there are stories after stories after stories of people applying the principle and having the abundance. It works every time. It doesn't work part of the time. It works all of the time. All you have to do is learn about it and work with principle. If you're going to do this, what's the best time to begin? That's it. So let's do a little exercise. Let's take a moment to close your eyes and just feel that sea of abundance around you right now. You know, when you close your eyes, you're closing out about 80% of your sensory input. You shut down the outer world. It's, more, it's easier to look up in consciousness with your eyes closed. And as you feel your eyes closed, feel them looking up to a spot in the lower center of your forehead, what's generally known as the third eye, or the single eye, as Jesus called it. And this single eye sees only God, only goodness, only abundance. Jesus said, if your eye be single, your body, your life is full. Do not judge by the appearance, he said. See only God, that one presence and one power. Now let's take your bank account up into this higher consciousness. No matter how full or how empty it may seem, bless what's there and see in it the abundance of the universe. Your account is full to overflowing, unlimited supply. And see your wallet, your purse, filled to overflowing, and bless whatever might seem to be there. That's the seed that will immediately grow into an abundant harvest. See your life filled with unlimited opportunity. There are literally thousands, millions of divine ideas circulating, waiting for you to latch on to one of them. Not all of them, just one at a time. Keep your eye single. Devote your energy to one thing. Get it going, and then you can begin another, and maybe even another. Get that order in your, your life. Get your ducks in a row. Organize. Then break the bread. Break the appearance of limitation. There is no lack. It's an illusion. Look up. See God at work in your business, in, in your idea. See yourself as a partner with God. You cannot fail with God as your partner. Feel the unlimited substance of God available to you. Just. Feel it in every cell and every atom of your being. Bless everyone, everything in your life, especially those that are difficult, the old man potters that are in your life. Look in their window and bless them, no matter what their reaction might be. Get the attitude of love and blessing, the attitude of abundance, Watch the miracles start happening. Watch the law work. Produce results in your life. This is how Jesus did it. And he practiced it to a point where he could do it immediately. And so too can we. We can have immediate abundance in our lives right now just in time for Christmas. In the name, in the nature of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.